Yes, go on. <laughs> Okay, so let's talk about a couple of uh, a couple of these function blocks that are in this uh, CAM toolbox, and they are CAM blend, uh, slave feed to length, uh, slave registration check, and then pull to length. So I'll start with CAM blend, and I'm not going to um, uh, spend too terribly much time on this because it has been talked about before, um, and it's actually part of. Uh, our advanced programming workshop. So if you attend this class, uh, it is centered around um, an application called a rotary knife, which I'll talk about in a little bit also, uh, where you go in and, and you use this exact functionality for CAM blend. So but the purpose of this block is to link together or blend three CAM files to improve uh, the engaging and disengaging with a running master. Um, think about what would happen if you immediately uh, engaged a cam in a positional relationship to a running master. And it's analogous to, uh, oh, there's a trolley car com coming by here and I want to jump on. Well, if you just latch onto the rail while it's moving, I don't know, damage, uh, rip your arm socket out, maybe. Um, so you need some sort of an acceleration profile in a positional relationship and then switch to your running cam where you can hop on and your relative speed is zero. A uh, typical application might be a rotary cut to length or any other application that requires product to be continuously moving. So here's how you use it. Um, the CAM blend block has this blend data structure and you need to populate this with application information including some of the CAM ID numbers, uh, the engage point, and then certain transition points. And then the user just executes, uh, triggers the input for ramp in to start the sequence. Um, to stop the sequence, uh, you would execute the ramp out. And the, there's a new one here that's been added recently called Execute Standstill. And uh, this engages directly to the running cam immediately, bypassing the ramp in cam. And it's to be used when the master is actually at zero speed uh, so that you can, again, kind of in that mode of cam recovery, you can um, uh, pick up where you left off. But one caution is to make sure that the master is at zero speed first because it's going to latch directly in to the running cam. Uh, taking a little bit closer look at the blend data structure, uh, we find three cam table IDs in there, one for each of your uh, individual profiles. It also has a, a window setting, an engage window. Um, again, previous toolbox versions split these out into two separate variables. Uh, but now we decided, well, there's really no need to do that. It's going to be the same engage, disengage window for both ramp in and ramp out. And you have three critical positions. The first is the ramp in switch over position, where it transitions from the ramp in to the running cam. And this position is typically set towards the end of the ramp in profile. And then you have your ramp out switch over position. Uh, where it transitions to the ramp out cam and typically this is set near the first the beginning portion of the running cam so you do a little bit of the running and then the rest it switches and the rest of the cycle is uh, accomplished by the ramp out uh, ramp out cam and then finally your standstill engage position the location of the master at standstill uh, so the example we have here is a, a rotary knife it's a great example of this type of blending where you have product or web moving along at some speed um, and the knife you want to cut off variable lengths but the knife has a fixed circumference and so it needs to run some nominal cam profile to be able to cut the desired variable length and we've set up this application with uh, the, the start of the knife up at the top dead center at an angle of uh, 180 degrees uh, the cut point is actually at zero degrees, but around that we have some synchronous zone where the speed of the knife has to match the speed of the product going by. And so uh, we set an angle, it might be 10 degrees, might be 20 degrees, the whole um, sync zone is plus or minus around zero. And um, although um, the example I'm going to show you doesn't really have a, a registration sensor, um, 
you know, that's certainly available. Uh, a lot of people have used it to pick up registration marks and then do a further shift on the knife, uh, a master shift actually, uh, to synchronize the cut point with some registration mark. And the master can be an external encoder or it could be um, a, another axis, uh, servo axis on the system. So the first step is to calculate your cams and populate the blend structure. So you need to define these things. Best place to do that is in a structured text program. Uh, in our little example here, we've done this um, statically in an init routine. Um, so it's, it's kind of hard to take a look at um, you know text code and just see what it does. But uh, this section here, actually this section right here, just sets up a couple of the variables. The knife circumference, uh, our sync angle and sync zone, and then some of the points around that. Uh, the point, the master and slave point um, at the beginning of the sync zone and the master and slave point at the end of the sync zone. And then we start defining our cam. Into the blend structure, we have our switchover positions. And uh, then the cams itself. And we see the ramp in cam is a very simple cam. It's a two-point cam. We have a, a, a tangent blending section that handles our acceleration into a very small straight line section in the sync zone. And then it will switch to the running cam, which is a three point. It's a, uh, an adjustment, which is the tangent match sandwiched in between two straight line segments, the first half and the second half of the sync zone. And then finally a ramp out cam. So these are very simple cams. Um, again, here we've hard coded, but this could also be put into a little cam segment calculator and calculated on the fly if you want to make adjustments on the fly. The next step, uh, once you've kind of figured out those points, is to generate it. And this is the complete chain that Eric spoke of, where we would have some sort of a cam data uh, profile. We would feed that into the cam generator and then use a cam struct select. So in this application, that's handled here in this code. I'll just zoom in on this here a little bit. So here we just have regular access control blocks, but here's where we generate the cam. Uh, cam generator into a cam struct select. It returns an ID number, and then we have our cam table manager that will help us to manage our memory and release the unused cam tables after a period of time. So this is the whole chain. Uh, we have three of them, one for each of the cams. And um, this chain here, we've used this methodology many times now in the field, and it's uh, proven to work very well. OK, so let's take a look at the rest of it here. Um, after you define your points, you generate your cams. The motion is quite simple. We just start the master running and then we can get profile data. So I'll uh, go in here and enable my axes. I see that the master and slave are both enabled. I'll set a, a zero position for this application. Start my master jogging and then prepare to operate. So I see the master's jogging. And then I do have some monitoring motion here. I'll zoom in a little farther. So we can take a look at uh, slave speed and position. So if I engage my ramp in, if you look at the output of this block, you see we're in blend status two. So it's going to um, report to you <clears throat> which cam it's executing. One is the ramp in cam, two is the running cam, uh, three would be the uh, stopping cam, and then zero is not engaged at all. And if we look at the captured profile, here's the result. So we see our master cycle. Here's what the, uh, the ramp in profile looks like. And you see that it engages and changes about this point here into the uh, running profile, which has this, um, this little cam profile. It's because uh, with this application, I set the knife circumference at 10 and the part length at 8. So it's going to have to do a little two-inch adjustment along the way. 
So we see the, uh, the knife speed up and then back down to speed so it can make the next cut. Until I told it to stop, at which point it executes the ramp out cam and it engages that at the beginning of the cycle. And then the rest of it's used to smoothly come down to a stop.